guys, so I'm back from my one month hiatus to deliver more yaoi content, the quality stuff. So for the past two weeks or so, I've been been watching a certain series and I've really come to enjoy it. Well, not a series, two series is in the same universe actually. And that would be Junji Romantica and Seikai Ichi Hatsukoi. I wanted to do a review on one of them, but I wasn't sure which one. So then I was just kind of like, hey, I did do a comparison since they're in the same universe and well, here I am now. So I'm gonna try to find out which one of them is better. Once again, this is all just my opinion, so don't get mad at me if I say something you don't like. Well, without further ado, let's go right into the video. Junju and Sekai both follow the same formula, which is following around three different couples. There is a fourth couple, but they're not as important as the other three. In Junju, the main couple is Misuki and Usagi. Misuki has to move into Usagi's house when his brother gets engaged. Since it's a yaoi, obviously after some time, the two start going out and yaoi ensues. Another couple Junjo follows is Hiro and Noki, a teacher at a university and a doctor who one day met out of the blue, and Miyagi and Shinobu. Shinobu liked Miyagi for years, and after a while he confessed at a cafe. I'm leaving out some major details that I'm gonna get into later about the characters and the relationships themselves. Seika Ichi, the main couple is Onodera and Takuno, who work together in the same manga publishing company. The thing is, in 10 years ago, they went out once, and that didn't really end well, and so now, Onodera is trying to avoid Takano and try not to catch feelings for him. The other is a love triangle between Chihiro, Hitori, and Yu. Chihiro and Tori were childhood friends, and Chihiro and Yu had known each other since middle school. The final couple is Kisa and Yukina. Kisa constantly went to the store Yukina worked at to watch him. It's creepy, I know. For work reasons, they got introduced. Later that night, they went to a bar, Yukina kissed Kisa, which started off their entire relationship. Plot, I'm giving the point to Sekai Ichi Hatsukoi for being a bit more creative and thinking a bit outside the box. They improved what they did for Junjo by giving the characters more motivation and character development in a shorter amount of time. Another thing I like about it is that all the characters are connected by the manga company, so sometimes some characters run into others and have conversations with each other, which I find pretty cool. There are a lot of characters in the series, so I'm just gonna stick to the main ones and try to be as brief as possible while describing them. Misuki, no offense to him, is a pretty bland protagonist. He freaks out about tiny little things, he's not afraid to voice his opinions, he's a little bit shy and takes absolutely forever to understand what his feelings for Usagi are, but he's still a really good character in my opinion. Usagi can be categorized as the strong and silent type. He's a very popular, successful author who really doesn't like opening up to people because of his child. He has some really funny, weird moments, and he has a pretty weird hobby if I do say so myself, but once again, he's another good character. Hiro is the absolutely biggest Sundari of this entire franchise, and that's the whole character description, a Sundari who works a lot. The only thing unique about him is that he used to like Usagi back when they were kids up until adulthood. Noogi, aka best boy of Junjo, gets the most character development out of anyone. He starts off really kind yet insecure about his lack of intelligence, but after about four years, he's still kind, but he's not so worried about Hiro thinking that he's dumb anymore. You like to joke around with Hiro a lot at the workplace, but outside work, he's a pretty serious guy. There is a reason why he's always serious, but that goes into spoiler territory for this character. I'll just say this. After a while, as the show progresses, he learns to let go of his past and accept what's happening right now in the present. Shinobu is a character that a lot of people don't like. He basically barges into Yu's life and demands that they go out, and really doesn't do much in the show besides complain and sulk. He just wants his senpai to notice him 24-7, which annoys a lot of the viewers. And I seem to be the only one who actually likes him. Onodera is the exact same description as Misuki, shy about his feelings, not afraid to yell at his boss, and he's blushing for like 70% of the show. I swear, this dude is always blushing. Takano is the same as Usagi, traumatized in childhood, doesn't like to open up to others, and strong silent type. Wait a minute, I'm noticing a trend here. Chihiro is very nice, yet very naive to others' feelings. He's a manga author along with you, and he's also famous for his manga. Another famous author, hmm. Tori is Chihiro's editor, and he's always talking about work and nothing else. He's nice, yet really protective over Chihiro. So protective, these two actually made it on the list for some of the worst anime couples of all time. Yu is said to be kind of the antagonist of that relationship, but he's just too nice and too relatable to be a villain. He's a little forward sometimes and a bit annoying, but he's still a good character all in all. Kisa is the same role character of Sekai. 
He comes off as innocent and young, but in reality, he's actually very insecure. He can't make any of his relationships work out. He's really scared of you can find out his feelings for him and think that he's a creep, so he tries to keep his distance from him. Yukina is my personal favorite character from Sekai. He sells shoujo manga at a store, and so he has to smooth talk a lot of the ladies who go there in order for them to buy the books. He's a really nice and funny guy, and he just wants to be with a senpai all the time. He's just nice, he reminds me of Tom Key for some reason. For characters, I'm giving the point to Junjo Romantica for one reason. Sekai seemed to copy a lot of characters that were in Junjo, not just the main ones, but some side characters too. Since Junjo did it first, I'm gonna give them the point. Now for the couples themselves. The couples have also been given different names that the author felt best to them, and I'll put those names below. Once again, I will be talking about Isaka or Asahina, or as the creator called them, Mistake. Yeah, that's the actual name, Mistake. This relationship is kind of what you expect from any boys love anime. Usagi is strongly pursuing Misuki until Misuki finally admits he likes Usagi. Usagi is constantly hitting on and playing around with Misuki, which makes for some great moments, but it's not that original to be fair. These two have constant problems in their relationship. From Hiro working too much, no he's insecurities, and him running away for a year, these guys never go one episode without a certain problem happening. They do have their moments, but there's a lot more conflict than pace in this one. Just read the name. That kind of sums up this entire relationship. Yu was living a perfectly fine life until Shinobu just kind of crashed in and was kind of like, hey, date me now, I have feelings for you, take responsibility for it, which kind of messed up the entire flow of Yu's life. Surprisingly, these two work out pretty well in the end, but there's just one thing I can't overlook, and that's the fact that there's 17 years between the two. Back in high school, Onatera was madly in love with Takano for a long time. After a few years, he finally confessed, and then they started going out. After a while, Onodera actually felt the same way, Takano just laughed, which made Onodera kick him and then run away for 10 years. A bit of an overreaction, but okay, you do you. 10 years later, Takano was the boss of the company Onodera works for, and still they to see each other every single day. And how this one actually goes when they're talking to each other, it's basically the exact same as Romantica from Junja Romantica. At first glance, this comes off as pretty typical, but what's special about this one is it's actually a love triangle. I mean, it's pretty obvious who Chihiro ends up with in the end, but it's still entertaining nonetheless. But like I mentioned before, Tori's attitude towards you made this pairing have a few problems. This one's my personal favorite pairing, so I'm a bit biased towards it. He says dealing with a constant internal battle between which he should prioritize more, his boyfriend or his job. Yukina acts like he's fine about everything, but he's actually dealing with the struggle of not being able to see Kisa every single day, which creates some problems in the future. Even though Kisa's a huge secondary sometimes, it's still really cute to see how this all plays out in the end. I'm gonna give the point to Sega Ichi Hatsukoi for having couples with less issues than the ones in Junja Romantica. In this show, it's two out of the three relationships that actually make a lot more sense than just the main one, Junjo. For animation, it's pretty obvious who wins in the end. Junjo came out in 2008, or Sekai came out in 2011, so the animation quality is obviously a bit better. I'm not saying Junjo Romantica's animation is bad by any means, I'm just saying Sekai Ichi's is a bit better. I'm gonna give the point in Junjo Romantica, because the side characters were really well done and relevant to the plot, where Sekai Ichi didn't really have that many. If there was a side character in Sekai Ichi Hatsukoi, they would just be there for an episode or two and then leave entirely without a word. In Junjo though, they would actually come into the plot most times and actually interfere with a lot of the relationships. It sounds bad, but it actually made for interesting content because each side character had a very clear personality with clear motives that drove them, and my favorite out of them being Haruhiko. Junjo Romantica is a longer series with 12 more episodes than Sekai Ichi does, which means there's more content in it. Sekai sadly doesn't have enough episodes to really make it feel like a full story. Without another season or OVA to clear up what happens between Onodera and Takano, I think it would make it a lot better in my opinion. That doesn't mean it was bad, I actually just want to see more of it, and that would be really nice actually. Junjo has three seasons on the other hand, which was actually perfect for the series. I would like to see an OVA or something for it, even a movie would be fine. Both shows have the same amount of rewatchability, which is that it's not that necessary. If you've watched Seikai before Junjo, then you'll probably want to go back to find all the references about Junjo Romantica since that came first, but other than that, there's no real reason because the plot's pretty straightforward and there's nothing too memorable or kinda like, oh, I only need to see that again kind of moments. 
Which one I would rewatch personally, that would go to Ginger Romantica, just because I found it a little bit more enjoyable overall. If you can't tell, I kind of prefer Junjo over Saikai. It took me only two days to finish the three seasons of Junjo, or it took me four days to finish the one season of Seikai. Was Seikai bad? No. I thought the plot was actually a bit more interesting than Junjo, but for some reason, I just don't like it better. So anyways, for overall score and rewatchability, I'm gonna give two more points to Junjo Romantica. Both are very good, and once again, this is all just my opinion, but I do think that Junjo wins in the end. Thank you to everyone who's gotten this far in the video. I've watched a bunch of anime this summer already, and I've done a bunch of other random stuff. I got into Vocaloids, it's been pretty eventful, and so that's kind of why I haven't been making videos recently. I've been kind of busy, and I just kind of lack the motivation for it altogether. There are surprisingly not a lot of fans for this anime, even though it's critically acclaimed for one of the best yaoi anime of all time, there's really no fandom for it. And if any Fujoshis are out there wondering what should I watch next, if you haven't seen Love Stage yet, check it out. It's only 10 episodes long with an OVA, and it's totally cool. It's really worth it. <laughs> well, anyways, that's all I got for today. Bye!